guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to do a 25 facts. I've been like, I've seen a 25 facts video and I thought it was cool. So these last few days, I've just been thinking of like 25 fun facts about myself to share on my channel. And in addition to this 25 facts, I'm going to do a get ready with me. So today I got half up, half down. Sis get bundles and so we know how to act. Fact number one. This fact I always used to tell like guys because I feel like it was like a little conversation starter. And they used to kind of be like <sighs> impressed by this. This is like one of those facts I would spit out when I'd be like caking on the phone or some like eighth grade type stuff, high school. I used to be on the basketball team when I was in third grade. I was the point guard and I literally hated playing basketball. Like, I literally never wanted to be in the game. I love riding the bench. Um, when I tried out for the team, I went to a Catholic school. So I guess that could be another fun fact. I went to a Catholic school up until fourth grade and they literally used to beat us with paddles. Like, beat us with wooden paddles for any and every reason you could think of. The dumbest reason, and sometimes the reasons weren't dumb, but most of the time it was dumb. So anyway, I didn't want to be in after school, so I say to my best friend, I feel like I was always a mastermind plot. I say to my best friend, I'm like, oh, the coach comes up down to after school, and he's like, who wants to try out for the basketball team? And I was like, we should try out for the team so we don't have to be in after school today. So she's like, all right, cool. I love a good, cool, I love a friend that's just with it. So she says, cool. And we get upstairs to the gym. Her freaking stepdad comes to pick her up and I'm like, damn. Cause I was like, oh, this basketball try about to be fun. Cause I was just gonna like goof around. So anyway, her stepdad comes to get her and I had to try out for the team by myself. Mind you, I could not play a lick of basketball. I made the freaking team because enough people didn't try out. So talk about a plan that just went way left. So I end up telling my mom, I'm like, mom, I made the basketball team. And my mom was really excited because she actually played basketball and I think she was actually good. The reason she stopped playing was because of an injury. So when I told her she was excited and I was just like, I'm not trying to stay on the team, like you tripping. And she's like, no, you're staying on the team. So my mom made me stay on the team for the entire year. It was literally the most embarrassing year of my life. I never wanted to be in the game. I think that's the year I developed anxiety. Like, I literally enjoy being on the bench. I can never remember the plays. And yeah, just having all those eyeballs on me at one time, I was like, this is too much. So yes, that's the year I believe I developed anxiety. And I guess that would be fact number three. I have social anxiety, so I think a lot of people will probably perceive me to be quiet or shy or a bitch or stuck up and it's like snooze flash surprise I'm really just feeling super anxious I get really anxious around large crowds of people and um, just overthinking situations before they happen. Like before a situation will happen, in my mind, I've played it out a thousand different ways and I freaked myself out about it before it even happened. So yes, I have social anxiety and that's something that I feel like with time I've gotten better and it's still something I have to work on and I be literally having friends who have to like literally calm me down. Like destiny, just relax. Okay, um, what am I on number four? Basketball, anxiety, I think I said Catholic school. Um, so yes, number 
number four. In college, I studied journalism. In high school, I was, I read this book randomly. Literally wasn't even a sign for me to read it. I kind of just stumbled upon it and found it interesting and I kept reading it. And it was called Art America. It was about these boys who grew up in the projects of Chicago. And I just thought it was really cool how they would go around their neighborhood um, interviewing people in their community. I thought that was super cool. And I was like, wow, I want to tell stories for people who their story may never be heard. So that's why I study journalism. Um, to this day, I still want to tell stories, but with journalism, I'm not going to make excuses. With journalism or with just creating something that's like artfully done, I feel like it takes a budget and that's something that I definitely want to accomplish. Another fact about me, I do not know how to make grilled cheese and I, I used to love grilled cheese as a kid. I also don't know how to make um, a boiled egg. And I just started eating eggs, but sometimes when they be putting like the little paprika on top and you know like the eggs they have at the cookouts, I be like going in on those, but I don't know how to make them. And I said that out loud the other day and I, people started going in on me like, you can't make a boiled egg, huh? <laughs> like doing those. And I'm like, what? How do I know when it's actually boiled versus when it's not? I don't think that's a crime to not know how to boil an egg. Um, hmm. Another fun fact, I've never had Lucky Charms and a lot of like popular cereals that people love and like swear by. I'm a really picky eater. So, certain cereals just, even though the box might look cool, it just didn't stand out to me. And, I used to eat the marshmallows in Lucky Charms, but I've never had a bowl of Lucky Charms where I'm eating the cereal, I'm eating the milk, and I'm eating the marshmallows together. Never. And part of that is because for a long time I did not drink milk. I have a lot of horror stories with food growing up, bad experiences with food, and that's what happens when you grow up in the ghetto. <sighs> Another fun fact, I have my, y'all excuse my dog, he's Another fun fact, I had my very first pair of Jordans in eighth grade. People be like, oh, you're an only child, you're an only child, that must be fun, you gotta be spoiled, woo woo woo. And it's like, I'm not, like I'm not spoiled. I've had to work for everything that I've wanted. To this day, I have to work overworking. Um, but yeah, first pair of Jordans, pure money threes, I love threes. Like, to this day, I just love a good pair of threes. Pure Money Threes, my favorite uncle bought them. Graduating eighth grade, he said, what do you want, Des Des? I said, I want some Jordans. And he gave me the money for it. And I'm like, energy. Like, to this day, if a guy don't have that type of energy, what is he doing in your life? I'm just playing. Yeah, some first pair of Jordans, Pure Moneys. What else? What else? Hmm, my type. A lot of people be wanting to know my type. People be trying to guess what my type is. For one, honestly, my type, this is what I always say. I'm big on vibes. So, for one, the vibe just has to be right. It can't be someone who's like, I don't want to, I don't want to call people names, but like a peon. Like, of course, that's not my type. A peon can have a good vibe, but if he's a peon, like, no. Not my type, nigga, not my type. But, um, I don't discriminate, like. I got all Tropicana, I got all kind of flavors. And the words of future. No, I don't discriminate. Any type of race is cool, as long as I can vibe with them. I have a couple of white rules in the past, but it was never anything serious. But yeah, like my type for sure is just the vibe. If we can click naturally and organically, you're my type. But just going deeper than that, honestly, I feel like hood guys be having the best personalities. <laughs> um, what else? What else? 
because I feel I still feel like that's vague. But if I was to name a particular person, that's just me going into too much detail. So I'll use a fictional character, and this is actually my favorite example of when talking about my type. A boogie from Paid and Fool. Like me personally, I am a very chill person. I don't do too much. Especially in public, like friends and family, that's another story. If I'm joking with my friends and family, yes, I might cut up. I might act funny, I might act, act silly, but I'm really not the type to do too much. Like, I don't overdo my part. I don't like when people overdo their part. I don't like attention seekers. But yeah, my type is like a boogie from Pay to Four. Like, he literally was just in the cut with a bag. Type, nigga, that's my type. Somebody who just be chilling, who got that bad, and they don't do too much. Like, I've been around guys who they might be fit that criteria where, yeah, they got a bag, but they're really extra and they're really annoying, and I feel like that just screams insecurity. By the way, I have on an Ethica Sports bra. My favorite movie, The Temptations, oh my god. Growing up, I feel like if I was to just describe my childhood, I would say Martin, Honey Buns, The Temptations. Me and my cousins would eat Honey Buns every night and watch Martin. And I feel like all our movies, we used to love when The Temptations would come on, we knew all the songs. We knew what part was what. And it just, that movie just gives me a good vibe. Like, I freaking love David Ruffin. I loved Paul as a kid. Paul was my nigga. Like, when Paul killed himself, oh my God, that crushed me. Yeah, favorite movie, Temptations. That movie is a vibe. When people love that movie, I automatically like look at them in a you completely are watching different a master light. Like, damn, you really cool. Like, you really gang. Which leads me to my next fun fact. I had never seen a lot of the classic black movies. And I was told, oh, you not black, you not black. You never seen that movie, you ain't black, you ain't black. And I'm like, wow, people, black people love telling you what make you black and what don't make you black. And to this day, I've never seen, um, what's that movie? It's like a knockoff Temptations. Oh, the five heartbeats. I'm like, bye. They're not even a real, they're not even a real group. Next. Never seen the five heartbeats. I recently tried to watch Bad Boys 1 and 2 just so I could possibly see the third one. I just, it just didn't hold my attention. I might have to give it a try again. But yes, I've never seen a lot of black movies. Also, I forgot to mention, in addition to Temptations, Mean Girls, Get Rich or Die Trying, and it's one more. Those are my top three. Mean Girls, Get Rich or Die Trying, and Temptations. I know all the punch lines to Mean Girls. Get Rich or Die Trying is just really motivational to me. Like, I love that movie. Favorite food? Crab legs. Oh my God, like for crab legs, I was a little something strange, okay? No, I'm just kidding, but no. I literally could damn near eat crab legs like every single day and I'm just like, wow, like, I feel like that's like a cliche rats to riches type of statement where it's like, you know, growing up, I have very low quality food. Don't get me wrong, my granny cook, she was cutting up in the kitchen, but, the food quality was just literally bottom of the barrel. And it's like I said in my previous statement, it scarred me from like a lot of things growing up. Like I used to love strawberries, I used to love peanut butter and jelly, and it's like certain things I cannot eat no more because I've had bad experiences with food. Um, another fun fact, my family always seen me as like the comedian, which a lot of people who don't know me personally probably wouldn't ever get that vibe. Cause like I said, I can be really shy, but when I'm like comfortable around you, I'm dead ass funny. And like, I feel like funny people, I hear, I, I've heard the saying, oh, funny people don't refer to themselves as funny. I'm funny in real life. No cap in 
real life, but a lot of people don't get to see that side of me. What else, what else? I love flowers. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that most of the people watching this video follow me on IG. And if you follow me, you probably peep that I like literally show off my flowers all the time. I'm always posting flowers. Flowers make me so happy, and I feel like that's so cliche. I love socks, like cute looking socks. I actually have on a pair right now. I might show you guys. But I'm gonna have to pull my foot out, but whatever. I'm gonna show y'all my socks. So the socks I have on say I'm gonna get shit done later. But like all my socks, I'm not gonna say all of them because you gotta have some simple ones in the bunch. A lot of my socks are like themed or just colorful and cute like that's just my thing i love socks since i was a kid another fun fact about myself i wear a lot of pink but blue is my favorite color and it's so funny like, when people be like kind of just trying to like observe things about me that's the first thing they say oh pink is your favorite color pink is your favorite color and it's like ah oh, i got it it's blue all right um, as far as my future, so I feel like I haven't really talked about my future for myself. Growing up, I said that I wanted five kids, and I think I still want a lot of children, but I feel like until you have your first kid, you can't really put a number on it. But yeah, growing up, I was like, I want five kids, I want five kids, I want five kids. I'm an only child, so I always wanted a big family. I grew up in a household with a lot of people, and it was a very drastic change in my life where I went from being around a lot of people to being around just my mom. And it was literally like a culture shock almost. I hated it. And I'd be like, I don't want to go to your house. I would call it her house instead of our house. It was our home. I had my own room. But instead, I wanted to be in the hood, sharing a bed, and all that other good stuff. I feel like I'm not like a black girl, or at least this is what I was told. And it kind of stuck with me like, damn, well maybe I don't have my black car. Now this is the only thing where I'm like, as a black girl, I shouldn't know how to do this. I don't know how to do baby hairs. And it really like disturbs my spirit. Cause I feel like this right here, ew, ew. I want to get in tune like I'm gonna be a whole mother one day okay I'm very girly but it's like I'm like not into girly music it actually kind of makes me cringe a little bit like the type of music where women are crying about how niggas don't like them back mm, can't relate like get out your feelings sis and get in your bag like the whole Janae, I be trying to get into it, but I don't know. Like it's just something about it. I'm like, yeah. She a little vibe though. Like beat wise, she's a vibe. I dated a lot of Scorpios, and I just it's to the point where I'm like, I found out it's this app called Sanctuary. And it'll kind of like tell you your sun, your moon, your stars, your Mercury, your Venus, all this crazy stuff, like as far as astrology. And from that app, I realized, or I should say, I learned that I have a lot of similar qualities with Scorpios um, as far as communicating and just. <sighs> I'm gonna have to pull up the app to go into detail. Hold on. So from the app Sanctuary, I realized that my sun is in Libra, my moon is in Leo, my rising is Capricorn, but this is where all the Scorpio come into play. Dun, dun, dun. Mercury is in Scorpio, which means apparently I communicate like a Scorpio. Um, my Mars is in Scorpio, so that's action. And then my Pluto is in Scorpio, which is transformation. So I have a lot of qualities that are Scorpio and also, also Capricorn. 
which is funny because one of my best friends is a Capricorn. Yeah, so I've dated a lot of Scorpios and I truly be feeling like I connect with them. Like, I'm not gonna lie, they kind of be hurting my feelings a little bit, but it almost be like, I can't be mad because I damn near be moving similar, which is like the funny part about it. I'm like, wow, like you're pulling a me on me. One of my biggest regrets, I was around Kodak. As you all may or may not know, Kodak is one of my favorite artists. I was around Kodak and I did not have a conversation with him. And it really ate me up alive. Like the next day I'm like, oh my goodness, like I didn't have a conversation with Kodak and now he's in jail, which is unfortunate. But at the time I had an edible and when I'm off of edibles, I'm literally like slow. It ain't cool. So yeah, that was my biggest regret. Like literally sitting in the same vicinity, same room, and I said nothing. This man would have never known that I know all of his songs and feel his lyrics on a deep level. You'd never know. Cause I didn't say two words to the fool. Another fact about myself is, and this is unfortunate, I feel like this has hindered me in terms of my success and my growth career-wise, I've experienced sexual harassment in the workplace. To this day, I'd be experiencing sexual harassment in the workplace. And it's really just annoying and it's unfortunate. And it's almost to the point where I'm like, I don't wanna have a daughter because I wouldn't want my daughter to go through what I've had to go through. People constantly just trying you like you know they can never look at you for your talents but instead they're looking at you like a piece of meat. I was working at 92.3 I experienced it from my supervisor and I never spoke on it and I just felt like it just continues it's to the point where I'm like I'm ready to sue a nigga like I'm not about to keep letting that slide I'm learning to play the keyboard again as a kid, I looked up to Alicia Keys. That was Bay woman crush every day. I loved her. Like, I used to have my mom give me braids just like Alicia Keys. And I took piano lessons. <sighs> um, I think I mentioned this, mentioned this in my last Get Ready With Me. Back when I was taking piano lessons, I wasn't completely focused. This is honestly when I, the beginning of my ADD my mom should have put her foot down and been like, I don't care if you want to practice or not, you're going to practice. I didn't want to practice, so I had a hard time reading music, and that kind of <sighs> discouraged me from practicing, reading the music, and I would prefer to watch that So Raven, Lizzie McGuire, Proud Family, those were my shows back in the day. So I'm like, I don't want to practice piano, I want to go watch Disney. And... Years later, as I got older and more mature, I was like, Mom, like, why didn't you make me practice? Um, yeah, so now that was one of my biggest regrets in life as far as goals and a goal that I quit on. So now I'm kind of using YouTube University and it helps a little bit, but I definitely think that I'm gonna go ahead and get a music teacher just so I can understand the concept of music theory. Right now I know how to play three songs on my keyboard, but I only know how to play the beginnings. Another fun fact about myself, like I said, I want five kids. I love children. Love them, love them, love them. I'm like such a sucker for kids. I have a very big soft spot for kids. And as a kid, I wanted to be a pediatric nurse. But then someone was like, yeah, you're gonna have to see a lot of blood and you know, babies I think my mom told me this and I was just like damn she kind of like put a new perspective of the downside <laughs> of being a pediatric nurse but I appreciate it because I don't want to see sick babies and blood does make me queasy and she thought well you know if you want to be a pediatric nurse blah, 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 blah. so she kind of gave me the reality and then eventually I was like oh I want to be a hairstylist or I want to be, what was the other one? It was like three careers. A third grade teacher. My third grade class was so bad. I want, My fourth grade class was so bad I wanted to be a um, fourth grade teacher so I could put kids in check. 
And I'll do two more facts. I've lost count. My first designer piece was a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. I thought I was all that in a bag of chips. Um, if I told y'all how I got that bag, I was, I want to say 22. And if I told y'all how I got that bag, that's another story for another day. <sighs> kind of ratchet. It's nothing degrading, but it's a little ratchet. So like I said, that's another story for another day. And my last fact is my very first um, designer fragrance, which is also a very popular fragrance on me. I get really good feedback and guys be like, what you wearing? What's that? What's that? My YSL. Paris, baby. Yeah, so that was my first designer perfume. It was a gift to me. Going on a little dinner date. This guy was like, oh, like, you know, are you into perfume? I think he called it like luxury perfume or designer perfume. And I was going in. I'm like, no, I think that's like a stupid purchase. Like, I'd rather someone get, oh, oh I was going in. I damn near was like, I'd rather someone just give me the money then go spend 200 on perfume like I'm going in because I had never had it so back then I did think 100 was a lot for perfume this man pulls out a box he gave me a whole gift set it was a perfume a lotion um and I want to say like a little travel size something else in there but afterwards I felt slow I was like oh my goodness this is awkward and I ended up really enjoying it and from there I bought more designer perfumes so yes um Hopefully this video you all got to know me a little well. More vlogs to come. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe.